Why is category theory a useful formalism for enabling our research here at Planting Space? I think that uh, here at Planting Space we are connecting to quite far, far away uh, areas of mathematics. So we are using some symbolic, uh, symbolic approach. So think about uh, uh, elements and connections between them, things like uh, connected to graph theory. And then we have probabilistic, so we have probabilistic programs, stochastic maps, and we want to connect these two. And uh, category theory is a language that allows to uh, connect far away areas of mathematics quite easily, very often. Yeah, yeah, because like we're trying to build things with computer programs, and there's like loads of different areas that we're using here at Planting Space, right? So. The thing with, well, the thing I love about category theory most is that you can have all of these like systems where you're composing things and then you just forget about the names and you have arrows. And we all understand what arrows are, we can draw them on the board. So I think it provides some kind of common language for their company. Yeah, and I mean, I think really that you mentioned like putting like the idea of like how, how do we take small pieces like little building blocks and put them together and and to be able to predict what that will what like what effect that will have. So especially when you're building a really complex system, uh, to know there's not going to be sort of unanticipated side effects of things, I think category theory uh, is kind of a perfect language for describing that. So for me, like this is a list much more practical thing, right? So because we have this big code base and we want to navigate the, the code base, right? And so category gives you means to zoom out of like the concrete implementation details, right? So that you don't lose track of how everything is, is connected. Um, I think, yeah, it's super useful. But in our approach, there are still some uh, challenges when it comes to applying uh, category theory. Yeah, I mean, like, it came from pure maths, right? So it's kind of still, people are still figuring out how to apply it, and it's it's kind of difficult to do that. But, I mean, I like the balance we have at Planting Space. Like, number one, I mean, I got into category theory, like, just because I like it, but it's really nice to see it being used in a practical way. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there are some challenges. Um, well... Well, one of the things um, we were talking about was like um, with 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 pure math, sometimes you can sort of get kind of narrowly focused in a particular area and then um, like having a real world problem that you're trying to solve and you have to kind of stretch your con your, your concepts and maybe look in some new areas of research uh, that you hadn't done done before. Um, and so in, in a way it can stimulate um, development in mathematics. Yeah, in theoretical uh, mathematics, you often are free to explore various parts because of their beauty. You uh, take a look at that part and then you see some connections, so you follow them. And here we are somehow grounded with, with something we want to achieve. So uh, we cannot uh, be... Uh, cannot be mirrored by that beauty we sometimes need to think w whether or not it is something that is going to be useful and if it's not we we need to go back backtrack and uh, to the point where where it, uh, yeah yeah it, it's weird how like the beauty of it but at least in, in my opinion it's kind of like a bit of a double-edged sword because i think one of the great things about category theory is you're sort of zooming out to like a million miles above and you can see the similarity between all these different areas and you're like oh i define a product and i can see it in groups i can see it in sets i can see it in and i mean this is useful like in the system right because like if people are describing how they're going to put things together they can use some kind of terms in category theory and it's like we know what they mean even if some details of the implementation change on the other hand it's like so fun that one can just like get lost in the abstraction i guess but yeah indeed and i think with category theory we can precisely reason about some very complex changes that we make to existing software and this formalism is very useful when correctness is important and uh, it's also a common language that we can use to 
uh, shared ideas and concepts between us in a precise way. But at the same time, I think it's a very powerful tool that allows us to also transmit our ideas and uh, the outputs of our work to the end user. Uh, we have some uh, contributions for the uh, user interaction side uh, where we also use uh, uh, category theory. Right? Yeah, I mean, so one, one of the major things I work on is the website and the front-end app. And um, it's been great to actually get to apply the category theory in designing the visualization tools. So we're, we're creating diagrams that show the structure um, of what our system is outputting. And it's actually all... Um, like. Uh, sort of justified by theorems and category theory that, that what we're displaying is kind of rigorously uh, representing what's happening in the system, uh, but also looks pretty and is easy, <laughs> relatively easy for an ordinary person to understand. So yeah, obviously yeah. we are talking about string diagrams, which are right. connected to monoidal categories, mm -hmm. yeah. which we use a lot, and also yeah. extensions of uh, monoidal categories. So Markov categories, bimonoidal categories, those are stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the diagrams. I think this is one of my favorite things about like doing category theory here is that there are just so many pictures like in category theory. Like we were talking before about what's useful about it. And I mean, you know, from a sort of maths point of view, you can be like, yeah, it's a good structure. You can see that it's being used to do a lot of things. But I think one of my favorite things about category theory is that it's like a visual language. So I know there's like a sort of joke that it's hard for people to understand, but I think the way a lot of communication goes on at planting space, you know, most things in category theory are just diagrams or wiring diagrams or sheet diagrams or some kind of pictures that everyone's visual cortex can grasp and it does become like a, a common language and it's it's nice to take something and like do something useful with it in that way. Hmm. Yeah, but we still sometimes need to translate this visual language into something that is going to be represented in memory of computer. Yeah. For example, from string diagrams to hypergraphs. And that's also where category theory uh, is help very helpful. Yeah, right. yeah. So Richard was saying that he found out about category theory uh, because he... Uh, had an interest in it and that's how he started pursuing it. Um, I came across category theory while um, trying to apply it to optimization research um, during uh, my PhD studies. Uh, can mm -hmm. you guys share uh, what's your personal journey uh, towards I mean, for me, category theory? For me it was really like um, getting into functional programming, like I uh, started uh, coding a bit uh, of Haskell like before I came here. And so, yeah, like there it helps a lot of, I mean, it's, it's basically baked in there in the type system, um, right? And so it helps a lot to, to understand um, this way of programming better um, that then also, you know, reflects on like what you're doing or influences the programming you're doing in other languages, like, like in Julia, what we, what we do here. Um, so that's definitely a big win because it gives you a different way of think about uh, thinking about things, mm -hmm. right? That, that yeah. might not be you might be didn't know about before. Yeah, for sure. S similar with me, I, I got into it uh, from functional programming, and then also uh, looking at knowledge representation. So, like um, this this idea of using uh, things like um, categories to represent databases or, or or other forms of knowledge representation, and um, then then that also also aligned very much when I came to work at Planning Space. For the work we're doing with knowledge representation, and um, yeah, and actually, um, some of Richard's uh, YouTube videos helped me with that too. <laughs> <laughs> Help me get into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for me, I learned uh, the basics of uh, category theory before uh, joining Planting Space, and it wasn't with connection to programming. I just was interested in it, and as I heard, uh, there is. Uh, it's kind of new thing in math, so it's, it was discovered like 70 years ago, so it's, so it's new thing in mathematics. <laughs> and, but it was when I joined Planting Space, when, when I went deep into category theory, and uh, Planting Space people uh, were very helpful with that, as we have uh, some category theory researchers, but I didn't feel intimidated. Uh, I was able to progress and uh, if I didn't understand something, uh, I, I would, it was explained to me using language I was able to, to grasp. So 
Uh, and now I'm using category theory to kind of uh, model some computational parts of our system. So we are uh, find, looking for ways we can compose smaller boxes into, into larger ones, which is exactly what uh, category th theory is, is for. Wow, so mm -hmm. we have very diverse backgrounds. Um, what would you guys say it's uh, the best uh, w uh, method for uh, sharing this knowledge? And um, based on our experience here at Planting Space, what do you like about us uh, sharing knowledge about category theory amongst each other? Well, I think we've got such a diverse group here at Planting Space because we have got people doing things to do with probability, people who are very into coding, people who are doing the organizational aspects and uh, people doing the category theory and other things. And so I think there's a decent community and a kind of way of sharing knowledge. So we have like the knowledge exchange programs and mentoring and things like this. So, yeah, I mean... And just like the weekly, the weekly uh, meetings we have, like where anybody can come to them, yeah. even if they're not directly involved in the research. And so you can kind of get your feet wet and just listen, just pat, like I found just sometimes listening to the other researchers talk, I'll absorb something maybe passively, even if I don't entirely understand mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and eventually you feel like you can get in the flow with it. And it's also like it's here, like at the team retreats, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Like we did, to, one, yeah. Like, like we did today, yeah. like uh, just discovering kind of like um, connections between uh, category theory, like categories of stochastic maps, and then like, uh, yeah, the, like how it relates to like the normal and type, the connections to type theory, type theory, but also like probability theory and statistics, right? Because yeah. a, like well, a I lot of the commun different communities have like different languages to say the same I think or it's like, a, it's like you were saying uh, yeah. indeed yes. it's like yeah. a relaxed environment because there are so many different disciplines so like personally I don't feel worried about like coming up to someone and be like oh yeah. I don't know like the absolute basics of whatever subject and there's someone who's like happy to explain it like you were explaining that probability stuff to me earlier today yeah but yeah, yeah. And we shouldn't forget the weekly reading group where we go through some uh, category theory uh, research. You get the old yeah. fun and together. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, the applied um, category theory group. Yeah. But um, what would you guys say are some of the open problems that we're facing when trying to uh, reach our ultimate goal? I mean, one of the things I'm doing in um, the research at the moment is sort of well, there's a few of us doing it. We're sort of trying to find some kind of overarching structure that we can represent what's going on in the system within and so there are some pretty big ideas in category theory things to do with enriched category theory like um, enriching over different quantiles or using higher category theory or I mean just doing fun stuff with uh, can extensions and uh, things like this and um, like I think there's some open problems to do with basically just finding the right structure which is fitting in with what we're doing because like we have all this knowledge we want to represent but then we're actually applying it in another place so we're having all these kind of functors between different categories but it's not clear exactly what kind of structure we want and i think this is one of the challenges like i find spending a lot of yeah yeah well, just, just, I think sometimes that lack of clarity, I mean, it might initially feel uh, very frustrating or different to somebody coming from a pure research background, but then I, in my experience so far, it's really pushed us to explore uh, different different avenues and maybe, yeah. maybe like find new ideas that we wouldn't have come to otherwise. I mean, I think it's kind of different to like pure research because we're more like kind of look at this oh that's maybe not so useful now look at this and we're just sort of like or maybe we need to come up with a new a new concept or a new def, you know kind of definition that maybe isn't yeah. already there in the research or extends something in the in the academic research. what, what yeah. was this uh, category you're uh, trying to define well that's the question isn't it? <laughs> um i mean at the moment we've been Pretty looking at um sort of yeah there's well, I mean, yeah, there's a few different problems. So one of them, yeah, the distributed Markov one, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we use that for our walks algorithm. Uh, and to formalize it, we want some notion of, like, a free distributive Markov category. And, like, yeah, another thing we've been thinking about recently is how you, can you attach different types of weak monoidal structure onto infinity categories. Yeah, there's lots of things. 
Yeah. For me, it's something that's maybe not big uh, open category theory problem, but uh, it we need it to to apply it in our system. So I'm looking for a way, to, best way to represent uh, morphisms in a free bimonoidal category. And uh, when I went to uh, ACT conference, applied category conference, I asked a few people, and they didn't have answers to, to have like canonical representation that doesn't grow exponentially with the size of the term. So I'm looking <coughs> for a solution for that and uh, it's a problem I hope to solve in a few months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so it looks like we have a lot of uh, work uh, moving forward and a lot of open, open problems to, to do a lot of research on. Mm -hmm. Exciting times. Well, should we uh, go get some dinner? Maybe we'll uh, morph to our terminal object? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>